to get to what the hell are the saints doing i don't understand this trade mike triplett is going to be here at 7 45 this morning we'll talk to trip about uh his explanation on the saints getting another first round pick giving up a future first round pick uh and explaining yes please (laughs) we're looking just for the 101 level uh mike triplett who covers the saints over at espn.com will be here at 7 45 um, what's that? So many numbers. Too many numbers. So many numbers. Yes. Is that that I didn't know what. Like, yeah. Oh, that, uh, I don't care. <laughs> 15, 2024, yes. first round, third round. I'm out. I, Somebody I'm posted out. a meme Somebody. underneath it. It's like, I ain't reading all this. I'm either real happy for you or I'm sorry that that <laughs> That's happened. How I yeah. Feel. <laughs> I think the Saints did okay. I guess. I don't know. Me I got no <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's what we call Trip. Yeah, right. Mike Triplett will be here at 7 45 this morning. If you got a specific question for Triplett about the Saints, Get inside of the chat app on YouTube. We appreciate you starting your Tuesday here with us. Make sure and hit that like button, share button, comment button if you don't mind. That helps us out tremendously. We'll also talk to John Brady at uh, 8 a.m. this morning as uh, Coach Brady last night down in New Orleans watching the national championship game. Bill Self and the Kansas Jayhawks. Serves you right, Mark Emmert, in the NCAA. <laughs> in the trophy over. Take that, your five level one violations, and your national championship trophy, and get back to Lawrence, Kansas. We'll talk about the game, the matchup, how big of a loser Mark Emmert is. He can't even give the trophy <laughs> over and announce the school's name correctly. He's, he's just a, just a total gold. fraud, man, Cut this gold. guy. <laughs> Mark Emmert. Kansas City Jayhawks, you prick. Get out of here. <laughs> Level one violations. No ruling. Fuck you. <laughs> good morning. Welcome to the Jordy Colada Show. Uh, Katie is here. The carpool queen is here. No carpool. Uh, a little stress on the face. We see it in the eyes. It's travel day for Sophie. No, it's, no, it's not. I don't. It's not travel day for <laughs> Saturday. Saturday. Travel it's day for it's your travel day. week. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What? She's gone. I'm sorry. Travel week behind no, the bar. Geez, they're for, still in school. Uh, Oh, spring uh, break is not here yet. And uh, she is uh, taking off to Italy. She Italy. Is in wow. Oh. Heads up, she may not come home. That's oh, what I'm thinking. That. <laughs> She's going to have one of those. And I don't even mean for the reasons you're thinking. I'm just <laughs> meaning for the Italian <laughs> men. <laughs> yeah. Be on the back of a Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mom, I'm hanging. <laughs> Oh, they're going to be scared of her. They don't have the, that tall of people. Yeah, really, yeah right? she'll be a giant. <laughs> she'll be she will giant. be. She'll be the belle of the ball. She might be walking a runway yeah. before it's all done. Yes. I mean, she could end up in Milan. Oh, God. Are they go- where are they going in Italy? Uh, they go to Rome and then Florence and they're going to Pisa. Uh, Forenzi. And then they go to France from there. Oh, Florence wow. is, the, is the problem there. Yeah, Florence. I, I remember That's Florence, city. which I barely do. I bought a bunch of leather there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you did. That's what you do there. You're with me, leather. Follow me, Bella. <laughs> <laughs> you got a great store for us. Exactly. Great deal on a leather She'll jacket. take the wall. <laughs> yeah. Give me some money. Yeah, right. <laughs> you got American money? Uh, <laughs> make sure to hit the like button, share button. As we said, Metropolitan Health Group sponsors our phone line every morning. We appreciate our our friends over at Metropolitan Health Group, Real Doctors, Real Solutions, Jason Ramazan and Charlie Harvey. As we said, Mark, uh, Mike Triplett will be here at the end of hour one. John Brady will be here at the beginning of hour two. We will talk to uh, both of them about uh, what's going on in the news. Saints in the news and Final Four in the news. Also brought to you every day by True Blue Water, TRUBlueWater.com. Get on the delivery route today just by simply logging onto their website, giving your information and get on the website to uh, get on the delivery route uh, today in Papa Earl Spice, 30% less sodium than the competition. If you're looking for that same kick but not that salt uh, flavor, you can get over to Papa Earl's and pick it up wherever you shop locally. Rouse's, High Neighbor, Calandro's. Uh, Stewie is here. Lloyd is here on this uh, on this Tuesday morning. Uh, we'll start in New Orleans last night uh, in what was an uh, incredible national championship game as Kansas rallied to beat North Carolina last night, 72-69. Uh, they got a huge game from David McCormick down low, who we were talking a little bit before the show. McCormick is a kind of a throwback type player. I mean, you, you rarely see these bigs in basketball anymore play with the back to the basket, right? Like, I mean, when I was kind of a kid coming up, I mean, it was Patrick Ewing, Akeem Olajuwon. I mean, all these centers who were dominant playing with their backs to the basket, Shaquille O'Neal. Um and now that's almost kind of a, a lost art. It's almost kind of you, you feel like a um, a dinosaur talking about you know basketball in that state. And McCormick 
he has that physical brute style where underneath the rim in the paint he is a issue man i mean he's got the size he's got the skill that little turnaround jump hook is uh is pretty incredible um to uh to watch him play on uh on that stage and going up against um Bacot, who i thought man what a tremendous effort on a bad wheel uh he provided last night i mean that that was that was tough to watch that happened at that point in the game um, for him, who he just battled all night long, and it came down to you know under two minutes in the game, and he's trying to make a play, and his ankle just gives out, and he couldn't finish the game. You could see the stress, and just see you know just the emotion flooding through him, and um, I felt terrible for, yeah. for for him sitting on the bench, but I thought it was just. An incredible game. One of the biggest comebacks. The uh, comeback. Yes, excuse me. The biggest yeah. comeback uh, <laughs> in, in championship. You, right? yeah, yeah. Uh, if I learned something yesterday, it was <laughs> the biggest it's comeback. Um, <laughs> in championship history. But, I mean, it was a tale of two halves Yeah. for for both teams, really. I mean, I thought Hubert Davis's in-game interview it last was night awesome. was awesome. <laughs> it made me want to bet I mean, North Carolina was, in the I mean, second me half. Too. So I did. Yeah. Me too. No, that was the halftime. I know. The, yeah. Yeah. the, the in-game where like they they got it like at one of the TV timeouts was was even better when he was like this is live Tracy yeah, that's, yeah, this, <laughs> this is, is live, live yeah. Tracy. Right? yes um, I you mean, can tell I, he's a former player I mean mm -hmm. little Jay and I were watching like, like we like like sat up you know yeah. you're like God like check us in yes get us in the game God he's got some energy um, oh you saw him on the sidelines you could tell he wanted to play yes. he did he was soaking it all up but I kind of thought in the moment is this. This this is a this is a huge spot for him. I yeah. mean, like this is first year head coach. Not to say like the moment or the game, but just the emotion of it. Because you could see when they got going. I mean, he gave a couple of like Tiger Woods fist pumps on the <laughs> sideline. Which as a coach, that takes a lot. You know what I mean? Like you kind of like you almost got to turn around and be like, <sighs> you know what I mean? Like I gotta I, I gotta I chill. I gotta chill. I mean, like you look at the clock and you're like, I mean, we got 36 minutes left to play. Um, and, and I kind of thought in that moment, like his team's playing great. They're playing as good as they can. If they can put this together, there's no way Kansas can keep up with them, but he might have to check like the, the emotions of the game. You could get caught up in it. Right. And even like his halftime interview, you know, like going in, I mean, his first half interview his halftime interview. You love to see it because I was concerned going into the game. If you were on North Carolina's side, if they were able to, if they were going to be able to turn it around mm -hmm. a lot of emotion you spent on Saturday night beating your biggest rival in that game on that stage to stamp your ticket to the national championship under a first year head coach you wondered if they were going to be able to work it back up just kind of the emotion of it and try and get ready in the first half I mean they started slow would Kansas get out to a 7-0 9-0 nine, nine nine two. Yeah, nine two run. I mean 7-0 to, start. to yeah. start the game they yeah. didn't miss and you, in North Carolina, you were you were kind of wondering, are they going to be able to get off the mat here early on? And then they, they I mean, did. they turned it into a clinic. I mean, they they it was a defensive clinic the way that they were shutting down. Now Kansas missed some bunnies, they missed some easy ones around the rim that they were making in the early part of the second half that got them right back in it. Um, but it was just big winner is college basketball again. Superdome was rocking seventy thousand. I think that they'll they'll probably criticize a little bit of the the floor the floor on 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 Backot's injury. Too clean. But I I wonder about how you you work those floors, kind of like you build them up like that. How they can stay sturdy on. Oh, uh, you think that that will be blamed for his injury? I don't know if it'll be blamed for it, but I think people are kind of looking. I mean, look, he was hurt already. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was he was playing already um, with the setback mm -hmm. and. The level of that game, the emotion of that game. I mean, Hubert Davis was right when he got interviewed. What, I mean, at that moment, that game was flying. Mm -hmm. I mean, people were in the air. People were getting to the rim. People were hitting shots. People were swatting shots. I mean, it was high energy, high level, big time college basketball. Mm -hmm. um, it was it, it was tremendous. I mean, it was just it was a great game and. You thought that North Carolina really controlled it going into to, to halftime, which they did, and then coming out of half, Kansas really found their way. And 
I mean, credit some of the adjustments. And it really wasn't the adjustments I thought that Kansas made it to half. It was more that they just started to make shots. They did. I mean, they had good looks in the first half. They just didn't knock them down. And they came out in the second half, and they started to finish at the rim. They started to get these shots, um, you know, to, to, to go down. And um, I, I just thought McCormick down low was – well, that's who they were force feeding early on because that was the play. That was like the the script for Nova was to get it to the big man. But you saw North Carolina's big man was able to body him up mm-hmm. for most of the game, and then they kind of started playing. I think Chuck had probably one of the better analysis at the half, saying, "Kansas, you're the fastest team in college basketball. Go run!" Mm-hmm. And they got out to a. That's what they did to start the second half. Okay. They were able to get to the rack. Then the then the three started falling for my guy. What's his name? Oh, uh, he's named after the the drink. Um, Eleven. Which one? All name game, bro. all name team, yeah, really all name did. game. I mean, it was incredible. Uh, the 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 names on the floor last night. My guy Puff Johnson, <laughs> Puff Johnson threw up. Remy, Remy Martin, Martin, yeah, a <laughs> transfer senior. I wonder how he was uh, how he was how he was made at one night. It must have been a big <laughs> glass of Remy, no yeah. doubt. <laughs> um, I mean, Mr. Martin was waiting on that. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. My first board, we were going to name Remy. Yes. Yeah. Martin. yeah. <laughs> I have the name already picked out. I don't even have to think uh, about Leaky it. Leaky Black. Leaky Black. Yeah, great name. Caleb loves Sneaky Great Sneaky game. Great. Uh-huh. Talk about all-time turnarounds Oof. from being the hero against if Duke. If the season to, ends for Caleb Love on Saturday night, if that Duke game is the national championship game, and that's his numbers, that's his effort, that's what he puts out, and that's the last thing you see, Caleb Love might be a lottery pick. Yep. Mm-hmm. They play another game after Saturday night. And Caleb Love struggles like he did. He went five of twenty-four from the field and missed like wide open shots that you got to hit on that stage. And kept shooting. He's back to school or back to the second round. Yep. Like whatever it's gonna be, Caleb. You can come back or and you can try and and, and try and be consistent at this, or because it just it was a that that's exactly what the scouts don't want to see. The yep. inconsistency of that on that stage in those moments. Um, you know, he, he, he played, he was the best player on the floor Saturday night against Duke, especially in the second half. Um, and then last night you, you couldn't really find him. And he was kind of the one that got the run started for Kansas. He, he took the first, I think two shots of the second half, missed both, got Kansas out running. And then it was kind of just, holy shit, brace yourself. Cause Kansas can go. God. And it was, a, it, I think we had a gambler in the house yesterday. I, did, I lost it. It um, I would have won three hundred fifty dollars. I was so excited. Money line play. Wow. Yeah, I did the money line. North Carolina was one sixty one and O and leading by fifteen points at the half for the wow. last twenty five years. Fun I saw fact. that stat too, so I hopped on. Crazy. You probably started drinking a little Remy Martin. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he got swirling it around. <laughs> He got hot. Where are we going this weekend, Dave? No kids? Sophie's in Italy? Oh Sophie, I might be joining you. Yeah, right? I know, right? Uh, update on the poll here. Update on the, uh, excuse me. Oh, we do have a poll question up. Southern Eye Center poll question of the first hour. Um, and it's not about the game. We're going to talk about the Saints coming up at the end of hour one. Who won the Saints trade? Saints, Eagles, or are we going to wait to ask Mike Triplett? <laughs> I just voted on the poll. I'm asking Mike Triplett. I do <laughs> not know That's what I voted. Uh, who is going to, who, who won this trade. We also have an update on our bracket, Stewie. Uh, Stewie, who fell asleep during warm-ups <laughs> last night. That's all I needed uh, to did see. Not, <laughs> did, not really watch a, did not watch a dribble, did not see a bounce of a ball last <laughs> night. Back-to-back games. Did, actually, no, I did. I watched the pregame. Oh, he watched the warm-ups. <laughs> oh, okay. Pre-game, watched the warm-ups, watched Baycott warm-up. He wasn't. He didn't look like he was full go. He didn't do the team warm up, but yeah, fell asleep like probably before the tip off. <laughs> before the ball was tipped. Uh, that's why you come here every morning, people, to get breaking sports news from insiders. <laughs> Stewie, 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 Stewie can't wait to hear your analysis. There he is. What up, BD? Great uh, game. Who won the uh, Who won our bracket challenge? Team Messina. Hey, Andrew Messina. He's having, right. he's having a couple, couple, couple of days. Heater here. Yeah. Yeah. A little uh, We've got second place, uh, second place prizes, too. Second place is Scott Taylor. All right, Scotty. Okay, Scott. Right, Scotty, Scotty T. Uh, Tom Grading did not watch one minute of the game. What's the oh. problem with you? What, 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 why? Too late? Maybe. Too late, yeah. He did not like the tip-off time. Uh, I fell yesterday. asleep in between the timeout and the last shot. Wow. I made it all, <laughs> all the, the way, way to the to finish the line, what? and I woke up when Jay, like, because I let Jay stay up last night, because I figured they were going to call off school because it's raining this morning. Same. Right? So I was like, <laughs> yeah. you know what? Yeah, we'll take our shot, bro. <laughs> yeah, you can stay up. Watch the entire game. Don't sweat it. You'll probably be off of school. So he's he's been asking me on the hour, have they called school yet? <laughs> have they called school yet? All-time feeling. Have they called school yet? 
Uh, finally, I had to break the news. I was like, dude, I think I, I, I read it wrong. You you got school? You got to go to bed with on, the day, on the day that they don't call it, my bad. Get up. You got to go. Um, but like the on, the, on the comes. shot, on the, 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 the end of the game shot, Jay like elbowed me to get up. And I, I was like, ah! <laughs> And like when I woke up, the ball was like in the air. Uh, and so it was an air ball, wasn't it? it was, and it was shot. love shooting again. It was love. Oh. It was love is love. love. Um, I did wake up for uh, the halftime uh, interview with the UNC with Hubert team. Davis. Yeah, he probably woke you yeah. up. Yeah, he yeah. looks he looks so happy. He was like, "Yeah, we're in this. Yeah. Like, it, it, we it, keep doing what we're doing. We're gonna it win." It felt like he was. It felt like he wanted to play. Yeah, it absolutely. Felt, yeah. It felt like he wanted to play. Um, Manic takes two elbows to the to the absolute schnoz <laughs> and just keeps that. playing. Jordan just texted me. They didn't call off school. <laughs> I know Clearly, better. they I didn't. Know. I'm sorry. Is he texting at school? Uh, no, he's on his way to school right now. Um, it's seven eighteen, Lloyd. They're not there. Yet. I don't know what time school. Is. I was I was an eight o'clock kid. Seven forty five <laughs> is when it started rolling. About seven fifty, I missed the the pledge and the prayer. I was like, I know both those things. We're good, right? <laughs> yep. yep. Uh, Andrew Messina, congratulations to you, and thank you for everyone who uh, who participated in our bracket challenge. Uh, thank you for uh, interacting with us every single day here. We really appreciate that. Andrew Messina was our winner. Who was the uh, second place, Stewie? Scott, Scott Taylor. Scott Taylor uh, was our second place. Scott Sailor. Uh, Scott oh. Sailor. Scott Sailor. Who's Scott third? Sailor. Did we do one, two, three? Easy over there. Third, get your money yeah, back. Calm down, Easy over there. Calm down. Calm down. Um, <laughs> Tom Granning said, never too late. Just wasn't interested. And wow, actually Tom. forgot about oh, it. Oh, I got hot. busy last night. Oh, good for you, Tom. Yeah, Tom. Go Mark. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, damn it. That's not the way I wanted to word that. Uh, Roll-off <laughs> dumpsters for Greater Baton Rouge. Yeah, yeah. Remember about Morales Roll-offs. Morales Roll-offs is located on Airline Highway that provide dumpster rentals for residential and commercial needs in Baton Rouge and surrounding areas. Um, they can help you. They've got background in construction. So if you are a contractor, we know, he, they know. Uh, how much uh, this part of the process means to a construction site. If you're a contractor and already have a, re a relationship set up with, uh, with a dumpster um, business uh, and, you've, uh, <laughs> and you've got a couple of projects going on, give Morales Roloffs a, a try and you'll see great customer service, competitive pricing, and like I said, they understand the industry. They understand the trade, so they'll really work with you to help you out, whether it's delivery, uh, whether it's rate, whatever it may be. They've got 10-yard dumpsters all the way up to 40-yard dumpsters with competitive pricing. They can help you out online. It's the best way to learn about them. MoralesRolloffs.com. MoralesRolloffs.com. Find them today online, or you can check them out on Airline Highway um, if you want to get in touch with Morales Roloffs. You can get... Uh, online at moralesrolloffs.com or call them at 225, easy phone number, 225-427-0000. Uh, best part of the night for me was Mark Emmert um, <laughs> having to hand over the national championship trophy to Bill Self and the Kansas Jayhawks, who Emmert can't even get that right, which is just, I mean, just, just a guy. How out of touch is the this man? The gift that keeps on giving. Not only did this guy get more money last year, he got a raise, he got more years on the job. He's got an extension and more cash to do whatever the hell they do up there in Indianapolis uh, at the NCAA. You would think that you would at least be able to announce the school, the winning school, of the College Basketball National Championship, correct, on the podium in front of 73,000 strong in the Dome. Salute to the city <laughs> of New Orleans and the Caesars Palace Superdome for putting on an uh, just an incredible event. Uh, I saw some of the video. Mincy had some video coming out from uh, down on the floor last night. I mean, it just... People everywhere. Didn't I mean, it, was, it make you jealous? Like, I, I it's did an hour go. from us, and I'm like, why I am I not go. there? Uh, well, really, the game that we should have been to was at Saturday night. Yes. Uh, it was Duke in, in North Carolina. That was yes, the one. Yes, that was the um, one. But last night was fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought outside of, obviously, a great game, and, and I guess great's probably a little um, overshooting it because it, was, it felt like it was going to turn into a blowout in the first half. And in the second half was really kind of a track meet and got – you know, Kansas caught back up, and then after that, it turned into a slugfest. It turned into kind of a boxing match where it was just back and forth. Um, but the best part of the night for me was Mark Emmert and the NCAA having to recognize Bill Self and the Kansas Jayhawks. And I'm not going to get going on where oh, you you know, should. The, the, the comparison <laughs> of, uh, of where not? LSU's basketball program is now comparing it to the national champs. Um, but, I mean, how can you not look – 
at the correlation and the line between LSU and Kansas and not look at the double standard that resides in this sport. I mean, really and truly, from day one in this argument, and I'm not going back, LSU is going to have to deal with what they've had to deal with, but in, since day one of this argument, when we called Dick Vitale out, when we called Pat Forty out, when we called the NCAA out, when we were calling college basketball out, and this goes back to our previous employer where we were on the radio, and we finally get the interview with Vitale. Really? Right, like I mean, the the, the interview. If you could, it, all this stuff is it lives on the it lives on the internet. You can go back and listen to it. Not that anybody wants to do that, but I mean, if you just need a frame of reference for where this conversation and argument started, has always been: Why do you treat schools differently than you te- than, than, than you treat other schools? And it seems to be the schools that are protected are the ones that historically have been connected and thought of of what college basketball is. Kansas, Duke, Kentucky, North Carolina, Villanova is now in that conversation. Why is it different on their campus than what's going on on LSU's campus? Let's just use LSU because LSU's become the model school of the last four years of what this corrupt college basketball structure people have been throwing down your face the same thing that came across mark emmert or said the same thing that came across dr william tate and scott woodward's desk a month ago is the same thing that kansas and bill self are staring at from the same organization the same talking head in Dick Vitale that was slamming down from his ivory tower of college basketball telling you that, co- that, that LSU was really the only school that was cheating and corrupt is now calling for a commissioner in the league to be Mike Krzyzewski, who is just, just, I mean, so out of touch, and asking for protocol to be set where it shouldn't take this long for schools to find out what their penalties are going to be. Just all this fluff, BS, crap. Knowing that all four teams that were playing in New Orleans this weekend were playing the exact way that LSU was being busted for and being penalized for and having to make moves on on their program and set them back a decade. Five level one violations on Will Wade that you could not prove. Five level ones on Bill Self that he's telling you with his pants down. F you, come get it. And you got to hand over the national championship trophy to Kansas last night? That's a joke, man. That is an absolute joke. That that sport is so, I mean, where is Pat Forty at? Where is Dick Vitale at? Where are the talking heads that want to clean up the sport so much and are worried about all this corruption? Where are they? I mean, it's, it is the double standard is it's embarrassing for the sport. More embarrassing than the president of the NCAA getting on stage last night and announcing the national champions as the Kansas City Jayhawks. <laughs> I mean, it was like, bro, can you get anything right? You make $3 million a year to play golf at a country club with a bunch of old white men and laugh and giggle about how you're scamming the entire world. I mean, the Supreme Court looked at Mark Emmert last year and said, I don't know if this business model would be legal Anywhere. Anywhere. And you're just sitting in Indianapolis under the nose of free enterprise saying they're they're doing it illegally. They're doing it illegally. They're the model of the sport. Let's celebrate Mike Krzyzewski. Get the hell out of here, man. I mean, this... This, this, all this dog and pony bullshit about the NCAA and cleaning the game up, it, it serves them right. 
to have to hand over that trophy to Bill Self in Kansas last night. Bill Self, did you see Jim Nance? I mean, he, Nance the whole time is like reaching for the microphone. Like, bro, <laughs> let me help you out. Like, give me the microphone back. You are tripping and falling all over yourself in front of the world again. So awkward. And then when like Self's kind of like, he had his hands like, give me the trophy, you prick. <laughs> He didn't even hand it over. He gave, he gave, gave it to, it to a the minion. director of college, yeah. another old white man, man in some <laughs> seat that makes no sense where he makes a couple of hundred thousand dollars a year off of him. They work for a nonprofit, though. <laughs> it just, man, it was, it was blood boiling to me last night watching After that. your nap? Yeah, I mean, after, I, mean, after <laughs> I got <laughs> bowed I woke, up, woke up pissed off. <laughs> but just, I mean, it was like, what a, what a scam. What a what an absolute scam. And I know that people are gonna it's over. Will Wade's gone. Yeah, I know. I look, man, I'm not trying to get anything back on it, but just the line between Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Lawrence, Kansas City <laughs> is is a mate the national champs in LSU basketball. We're playing the same exact game. The same game. And Kansas is celebrated. And LSU set back a decade. The argument started four years ago when hitting Vital on Twitter and going at 40 on social media, asking them for interviews. The million dollar question that we had was just why. It wasn't, are you out to get LSU? What's up with Will Wade? Why are you coming down on everything purple and gold? No, it wasn't really about that. It was just, why are you crawling up and asking how Duke got Zion after Kansas's assistant is on a wiretap telling Lee Anderson, Zion's stepdad, that they got quarter of a million dollars set aside for him. He got $250,000. You think he went to Duke for free? You got text messages from Bill Self going back with Merle Code, who's in jail right now all over this stuff, which is amazing. <laughs> going back and forth with Merle Code on text. They got the text messages from Bill Self's phone. Are we good? Merle Code hits him back. Yeah, that was simple. Who else you want? Level one violation. Five of them. LSU got... Got hit on text messages from something that happened at VCU in 2017 that you still got no, and you, you know the background of it. It's a legal case. I mean, all of it just reeks. It's so, it's so stinky, man. You got Dick Vital telling you he wants Coach K to be the commissioner of college basketball. <laughs> Coach K's a thug. <laughs> Coach K is a, I mean, if 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 Will Wade is 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 a thug in college basketball because he was doing the same thing that he saw Coach K doing and Calipari doing and Bill Self doing and Roy Williams doing, because he was looking at them and saying, "Hell, I want to be, I, I want my team to play on the final weekend of the sport. I'd love to play in a national championship game. Could you imagine walking the sidelines like Davis and Self were last night, standing in front of 70,000 people God. inside the Superdome, knowing that everybody in the country that loves the sport is glued to their television? What a huge night to celebrate the sport, your program, and your accomplishment as a coach. How do we get there? You got to get players. How do you get players? People go through the school, uh, go through the shoe companies, People are offering up benefits for players. The ones that do it the best are Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina. Villanova's been making some headway. Ah, there's usually the teams that are alive on the last weekend. Okay, I get it. Everybody follows suit. You want to be competitive in the sport? That's how you're competitive. Because the ones that are winning the national championships and going to Final Fours are the ones writing the blueprint. And they've been caught too. I mean, it's just, 
the double standard in that sport and the corruption in that sport or you know what however you want. I don't I don't I've never thought it was corrupt but the the letter of the law and the rules say it is and you want to paint these coaches to be bad characters and bad people because they're just trying to play the game and win basketball and Kansas wins the national championship. It serves Mark Emmert and the NCAA right, having to stand up on that podium in front of the college basketball world and hand that trophy over to Bill Self and the Kansas City Jayhawks. I mean, you blubbering fool, bro. You bumbling idiot. I mean, you can't even get this right. I mean, I'd imagine his board this morning is like, Mark, I think you did it on purpose. Do, do you need an index card? <laughs> do you need a teleprompter? I don't think he did. I mean, if you go back and listen to it, he had that ass-puckering, embarrassing, like, <gasps> I mean, Kansas, you know what I mean? Like, he flubbed it. I mean, he screwed the moment up. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't even give him that, I wouldn't even give him that, much pray I don't even think he's that smart to do that I don't even think that he would know if you were like hey man go out there and troll Bill Self like go mess with him a little bit no he wouldn't do that he would be like I wouldn't even know what to do yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean like a good one I mean like <laughs> I, I don't even know I don't even know what would be a good joke I, I, I mean they, they he's got the he's got the Goodell quality down where every single word he says he's booed mm-hmm. I mean like last night you couldn't even hear what he was saying over I mean the entire, it wasn't just the Kansas fans. It was the entire crowd were booing him. I mean, he is an absolute, and look, I know that he's making money. He's got more years, but I mean, his absence of power and absence of just being able to understand the moment and what's even going is just blinding. I mean, it is, that was amazing, man. It was. It was. I mean, it is similar to Goodell having to go back to what New England after Deflate Gate and give. The, he had to hand the trophy off, and then they had the um, first game in New England after the Super Bowl run with Tom Brady suspended for Deflate Gate, and he had to like he had to go back to New England, and he ducked out. He didn't want to be there because he knew that they would eat his lunch mm-hmm. in Gillette Stadium, so he didn't show up. But they're you're right. They're in that same vein of. This mother here mm-hmm. is going to get it no matter where he goes. You talk, you give it to Kansas, but if you give it to North Carolina, it's still the same same song, different person. Like same song, different person singing. Because North Carolina, if you look back, they had those fake classes that they put a hundred student athletes in. Like that's a violation, right. I would imagine, in some way. They didn't get in any trouble. Who was it? Rashard McCants. They yes. came out and said, "Look, man, here's how they're doing it. Here's how we were faking classes. We never went to school." I mean, he came out and was like, "This is this is what was going on." It's a fake class. I mean, uh, and the NCAA never, they never budged. I mean, it just. I guess you do you're, if you were any good on the team, if you got in that class. If you were like on the fringe of, mm-hmm. if you got the fake class, you're not like, oh, I guess I'm not going to play if I have to <laughs> take real classes. <laughs> but um, if you get into the, the studies class, whatever it was, right. like, hell yeah, I'm on the roster. They did boost up the GPA. <laughs> but it is also a, um, it also is a lesson on dealing with the NCAA. It really is. I mean, Kansas has pretty much told the NCAA, nah, you do what you want, man. We're going to give our coach a lifetime contract, and we're not going to change our, our ways of, of supporting the basketball program. And, you know, Kansas is in winter circle. And, you know, whether LSU was staring down the, 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 the barrel of – of something coming on the the football program, whatever made them move, whatever made them act, whatever made them react um, has really caused this effect. They still could have stood face and and told the NCAA who had no proof of still a notice of allegations that they served and even LSU recognized in their statement that they served after moving on Will Wade that, there was still no proof in, in, in those allegations. So they could have stood up and said, hey, we'll continue to fight them like Kansas is doing and, and supported their program 
and now you know Kansas is 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 the national champs. Um, it's just it, it's crazy to see the NCAA and how they work because um, you know it's on full display right now in in just the hypocrisy of of the entire organization. And it, like I said, it, it it serves Mark Emmert and that uh, you know the NCAA right for having to stand on that podium last night and serve Kansas for a national championship. Um, Cause that's gotta be an embarrassing moment for an organization that, that tries to govern intercollegiate athletics, knowing that, you know, this, this program is pretty much stick it in your face and you can't do really anything about it. And all the, the, the public sentiment is against you. I mean, listen to that place last night. I mean, the booze were raining down on Mark Emmert. But can we will talk. Uh, can't New hear it on the golf course. We'll talk. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, we will talk to the New Orleans Saints insider, Mike Triplett, coming up here from ESPN.com. Mike's going to spell, uh, hopefully, some relief for us on the uh, New Orleans Saints Philadelphia Eagles trade, give an explanation on just. Uh, who won that trade, what the Saints are receiving, uh, what the Saints are giving up, uh, and uh, how that will affect the draft strategy of New Orleans' front office coming up here at the end of the month. We also got some Derek Stingley news that we need to get to. Tomorrow is Pro Day on LSU's campus. By all accounts, Stingley is set to be a full go uh, for his workout tomorrow, so it should be very impressive to see what potentially could be the number one cornerback in the draft coming off the board uh, to see, I, I'd imagine that a lot of that is going to bank on uh, what tomorrow looks like for Stingley Jr., whether it's the foot or just, you know, people seeing him in a football skill atmosphere in the first time uh, in a while. So uh, we'll talk about that. We're also going to go back to uh, the Final Four and talk a little college basketball with John Brady coming up here at uh, 8 a.m. Don't forget, uh, every single day, our show is brought to you by Hargrove Roofing and our roofer over there, Steel Henry, 318-229-7266. Uh, there are some reports of some weather coming through South Louisiana today. Uh, There's some hail afoot. Still's happy when he hears that. Right? A lot, <laughs> uh, a lot of rain, uh, a lot of uh, thunderstorms, Masochist. which is going to bring some hail. Uh, and usually with hail, that means roof damage. So uh, get over to Hargrove Roofing three one eight two two nine seven two six six. That's our friend Steel Henry. Directly to him on his cell phone, uh, and you can get in touch with him three one eight two two nine seven two six six is the phone number to get in touch with Steele. Henry can help you today. Look, get out in front of this weather, man. If weather's coming, get in touch with Steele and let him know that uh, uh, you want to get over uh, and get him over to uh, give you an inspection uh, tomorrow or at the end of the week and uh, let him see if any damage has come through uh, and uh, possibly um, enough damage done where you can get a new roof. Get in touch <laughs> with Steele Henry. 318-229-7266 is the phone number. Get in touch with him uh, today. All right, uh, give me a break here. We will uh, log in and talk to Mike Triplett next here uh, on the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Is that Schadenfreude? Pleasure from other people's pain. Uh, Isn't that right? Yeah. That's steel. I guess it's kind of bad to be wishing for hail. Yeah. People are like, can you please stop? <laughs> they use a Baton Rouge. You won't have to drive far. Oh, uh, yeah. Didn't call me, but okay. Jefferson Highway right here in Baton Rouge has been serving your eyes for over 40 years in the capital region. They offer friendly service, friendly service and a help. Southern Eye Centers located at 6859 Jefferson Highway right here in Baton Rouge has been serving your eyes for over 40 years in the capital region. They offer friendly service in a helpful environment with the highest level of personal care to manage your eye health and vision needs. If you want more information, log online to southerneyecenters.com. That is southerneyecenters.com. Stop in and check out their beautiful office located on Jefferson Highway right here in the capital city. And remember, each time you walk in there and you mention the Jordy Collada Show, Dr. Ann Shaw and Southern Eye Centers will take 25% off of their fantastic selection of sunglasses. All you got to do is mention the Jordy Collada Show. Check them out, southerneyecenters.com and located at 6859 Jefferson Highway.
Hey y'all, it's Mikey from Mike Mike'd Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here. Get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house. Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike'd Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. All right, welcome back here to the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. Stick around. We are going to talk to Lee Anderson, Zion Williamson's stepdad, is going to join us at 8.30 this morning. Big news around Zion moving this week. Also want to uh, talk to uh, Mr. Anderson about uh, his relationship with the city uh, and New Orleans and uh, see where they stand going into uh, another offseason uh, for the Pelicans and see if we can get Zion back on the floor here. Uh, pretty soon. So stick around. Lee Anderson, Zion Williamson's stepdad, will be joining us at 8.30 this morning here on the Jordy Collada Show. Uh, we will also talk to John Brady coming up here at 8 a.m. And now we go to, we good over there, Lizzie? Uh, uh, I'm about to find out. Uh, I, see, I see volume, but I don't see a person. Mike Triplett of ESPN.com. Well, he did deny our video. Oh, okay. We're all good there. It says um, Nate Velasquez. So. Uh, Mike, good morning. How are you? Nothing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now go. Mike, good morning. How are you? Now he's gone. He's he was up. bumping. He was bumping audio. But I don't see anything. That's what it looks like. It usually shows something. Give him a text again. Tell uh, yeah, he, him to said call back he, in. he said he's trying again. Um, perfect, perfect. All right, so uh, we will uh, we'll talk to Mike Triple here about the uh, the New Orleans Saints and the Philadelphia Eagles trade. Uh, the Saints are getting the number sixteen pick in this year's draft. They are getting the number nineteen pick in this year's draft. They are getting the number one hundred and ninety fourth pick in this year's draft. The Eagles are getting the eighteenth pick, and they're getting the Saints' future first round pick in twenty twenty three. And they are also getting the 2024 second round pick. Uh, it is a lot of numbers. It's a lot of picks. It's a lot of information. Mike Triplett, who covers the Saints for ESPN.com, uh, is on the line with us and hopefully going to bring some clarity to it uh, for us. Uh, what's that? I think so. I mean, he disappeared. Um, all right. So uh, Mike is kind of bumping in and out for us uh, this morning. Hopefully we can get that fixed up and he can give us uh, some insight on uh, on where we're going here for the Eagles and uh, and Saints trade, as we said. Um, there he is. Mike, you got us? Good morning, man. How are you? I just saw him. Let's take a break, and we'll be right back right, here perfect. on the Jordy Collada Show. We'll see. I have to do both.
Mike. Mike, can you hear me? Hey, Mike. Oh, he has to put it in his ear or put on ear pods, air pods. What's that? He has to put on air pods or put it in his ear. Because he'll either hold it up to his ear, he can't hear us unless he has a way to hear us. Because it just goes through the phone. Hey, y'all. It's Mikey from Mike Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here, get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, mic Up, brought to you by Sterling Automotive. Every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Southern Eye Centers, located at 6859 Jefferson Highway, right here in Baton Rouge, has been serving your eyes for over 40 years in the Capital Region. They offer friendly service in a helpful environment with the highest level of personal care to manage your eye health and vision needs. If you want more information, log online to southerneyecenters.com. That is southerneyecenters.com. Stop in and check out their beautiful office located on Jefferson Highway right here in the capital city. And remember, each time you walk in there and you mention the Jordy Collada Show, Dr. Ann Shaw and Southern Eye Centers will take 25% off of their fantastic selection of sunglasses. All you got to do is mention the Jordy Collada Show. Check them out, southerneyecenters.com and located at 6859 Jefferson Highway. At Lee Cup with Mike Triplett, hopefully and get an explanation on the uh, Saints Eagles trade here from ESPN.com insider uh, Mike Triplett, who uh, was set to join us. Garrett Nussmeyer was sending the uh, was talking to the media uh, earlier this week, and uh, we were talking about it yesterday. I really do believe that Garrett Nussmeyer has a real opportunity to be the quarterback on LSU's team. The more people that I talk to, the more people that uh, have seen Nussmeyer now. Uh, get adjusted to the new staff, get adjusted to uh, what's going on with, uh, you know, just kind of the, the, the new organization of LSU football. Um, Garrett Nussmeyer seems to be taking tremendous strides uh, between years one and two. And at this mile marker of his spring, um, you know, his spring session of his going into his sophomore season uh, really seems to be on pace. Um So it was, uh, it was interesting to hear from Nussmeyer uh, on Saturday as he had a chance to speak with the media and was speaking on everything uh, concerning LSU, where um, even talked about last year in the bowl game about not pulling his red shirt um, and where they are on just kind of where they were in that decision-making process. He didn't get too much into it, uh, but he just talked about the pride that he has for the LSU football program. Uh, being a part of the LSU program and how tough that was for him in bowl preparation to not have an opportunity to play when you know he had played some uh, you know played time already uh, up to that season. Um, he was talking about Brian Kelly involved uh, with the quarterback room uh, and the difference between having a a coach who is uh, you know a defensive lineman or a former defensive lineman and a defensive line coach. Um, to where they are now and working with quarterbacks and having a guy who's a head coach who cares about the offense and working day in, day out with, uh, with the quarterback group. Um, I really think that after some of the, the, the people that I have 
um, talked to over the last couple of days that Garrett Nussmeyer really is a true competitor on having an opportunity to be the starting quarterback for LSU. I think when people saw Jaden Daniels, you, you, you figured that they were bringing him in to be the starter. Um, when Max, uh, when 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 Miles Miles Brennan was coming back, um, everybody thought you know he's going to be the starter, and kind of the forgotten guy in this competition, or not so much forgotten, and not even overlooked, but the one that doesn't have this um, this thought behind him that he's going to be a starter, that he's going to be the guy just because whether he's up against the time or he's a transfer in, he's just a guy that was recruited to LSU. He's going into his second season, and he's continuing to progress, and he's continuing to develop. Um, it seems like there's kind of a different light shed on him now with Brian Kelly, right, with the staff change? Uh, well, I think anytime, mm -hmm. anytime you have a staff change for 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 everybody. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a new it's a new evaluation. Yeah, um, it's a new set of eyeballs. It's a new uh, it's a new evaluator. Mm -hmm. It's it's somebody new to look at the position, and you know, give their analysis of it. And I think there are some things that Garrett Nussmeyer is looking to kind of shave off of his reputation. He doesn't want to be known as a gunslinger, um, and I think he's kind of he's gotten that reputation for for his live arm. You know where he can make big throws and push the ball down the field, but you know, I mean, he said he, he really wanted to turn into a manager. You mm -hmm. know, kind of more of a a game manager of of you know the offense, and that's what he's kind of learning under Mike Dembrock and under Brian Kelly is just kind of take what the game gives you and take every play and move on to the next one. And I think that that gives a coach a lot of confidence. You know that that can give. A coach a lot of confidence if you can master that managing of a game from that position and you know I think we hear game manager in college football or in football and you take it almost as a criticism at quarterback but really and truly to me some of the great quarterbacks that are on all levels are really game managers. They just make plays when the opportunities present themselves, which is what you know a good manager does. So I think Nussmeyer is really trying to turn into um, you know somebody that not really shaking the reputation, but changing his style a little bit for not being the the, the, the risk taker that he may be perceived to be, and more of a guy that can just play you know in between the chains and just keep moving and. Um, you know, running an efficient offense. I mean, some of the positive things that I've heard about Nussmeyer over the last couple of days is that he's very driven, he's very motivated. Obviously, he's a coach's son, so his, you know, his football IQ um, is 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 a little advanced. Um, but I mean, he just he understands how to play the game, and he's got the respect of his teammates, and he's got some confidence and swagger to him out on the practice field where he's, he's not afraid of, of any competition, whether it be a, a transfer in uh, like Jaden Daniels and, or it, it's, it's a guy like Miles Brennan. Um, yeah, I love or, quote or, about that or even, too. or even a guy like Walker Howard, who's the number one quarterback in the country. That's a lot of competition. A lot of competition. Internally. It is. But I love that he said you don't run from it. You just let it make yourself better. That's uh, awesome. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's endeared him to a lot of people over there, whether it's his mm -hmm. teammates or whether it's, it's the coaching staff. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really been um, helpful for him to kind of to have that reputation and be a hard worker, and he's got the respect of his teammates. I, I, I believe um, that there is a section of the offensive group that really believes that he's going to be the quarterback for LSU next year. That's exciting. It may not be the first game against Florida State, but at some point next season, I believe that Garrett Nussmeyer is going to be LSU's quarterback just because he seems to be on this track of not winning people over, but just gaining a lot of steam and confidence. And it's happening because of what he's accomplishing and what he's doing, but the people that are starting to believe in him and starting to support him, I think that that is going to, uh, you know, at some point it's going to be tough 
to keep him off the field. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so let me see if we can't set up the second hour here. We're supposed to be joined by John Brady, but I'd love to talk to Mike Triplett at some point. He's still uh, wondering if we're going to be able to get him in. So we will see if we can't set him up, move John Brady around. We've got Zion Williamson's stepdad joining us here in the second hour. Uh, so we're going to make sure we got everything – uh, taken care of on our standpoint from a technological standpoint. We appreciate you being patient with us here uh, on, this, uh, on this Tuesday morning. Remember, we're brought to you uh, by Johnson and Spillers. Johnson and Spillers is our dentist, and they're located. they got a couple of locations, uh, and one is in Gonzales. The other is in Baton Rouge, and you can get in touch with them today by logging online to johnsonspillers.com. JohnsonSpillers.com is where you can get in touch with them. Uh, easiest place to do that is request an appointment online, um, and you can learn about both locations, Gonzales and in Baton Rouge. In Baton Rouge, it's located in between Segan Lane and uh, Blue Bonnet on Perkins Road and out in Gonzales on Prepara Avenue. Uh, online, JohnsonSpillers.com, JohnsonSpillers.com to get in touch with them. We'll be back with more of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Go Chevrolet. Mikey from Mike Up. Catch us live every Monday and Wednesday, 11 to 1. Talk gambling, talk sports, have a ton of guests in here, get a little perspective from the athlete side of it. We got Lloyd in the house, Jay Mitch is in here a lot of the time. It's a fun show, great show. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. If you don't like it, it's fine. Make fun of us, it's okay. Just get us out there, show, share us out there. We having fun, we want to share our fun with you. Like I said, Mike Up brought to you by Sterling Automotive every Monday through Wednesday, 11 to 1. Catch us live on YouTube, baby. See y'all. Southern Eye Centers, located at 6859 Jefferson Highway, right here in Baton Rouge, has been serving your eyes for over 40 years in the Capital Region. They offer friendly service in a helpful environment with the highest level of personal care to manage your eye health and vision needs. If you want more information, log online to southerneyecenters.com. That is southerneyecenters.com. Stop in and check out their beautiful office located on Jefferson Highway right here in the capital city. And remember, each time you walk in there and you mention the Jordy Collada Show, Dr. Ann Shaw and Southern Eye Centers will take 25% off of their fantastic selection of sunglasses. All you got to do is mention the Jordy Collada Show. Check them out, southerneyecenters.com and located at 6859 Jefferson Highway. All right, welcome back here to Hour 2 of the Jordy Collada Show, driven and powered by Ghost Chevrolet. Make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button. 
We are uh, set to be joined here uh, by Coach John Brady here as we'll get back to college basketball. Mike Triplett is going to join us again at 8.15 this morning, and then we'll talk to Lee Anderson, who is uh, Zion Williamson's stepdad, coming up here at, uh, at 8.30 this morning. Uh, Coach Brady is uh, saying that uh, he is linked in, and uh, we will uh, log into him here and talk to him about last night's national championship game. Remember, um, we're at uh, we're with Go Chevrolet drives us every single day. G E A U X Chevrolet dot com online is where you can find them there. Laplace, Louisiana for brand new cars or out in Baton Rouge at Go Express Auto Sales is where you can find uh, Go Express Auto Sales on Florida and Sherwood Forest. Go Chevrolet, G-E-A-U-X, Chevrolet.com, as uh, we are going to uh, talk to uh, Coach Brady coming up here about uh, the North Carolina game last night where North Carolina was uh, had their chance to, uh, to down uh, Kansas last night but just couldn't get over the hump as they fell 72-69 and was a uh, fantastic college basketball weekend, college basketball game. I know Coach Brady was down in New Orleans uh, and was able to uh, host an event down there with a lot of his friends and a lot of former coaches uh, that That's were down cool. there taking part. Of his, uh, they were at Desi Vegas Steakhouse fun. On, uh, on Saturday night. God, I feel like I missed out. I mean, not that I would be invited to that, but I just feel like not being there, I missed so much. It was, so many uh, people were there. Yeah, it was a great weekend yeah. down in New Orleans. But Kansas uh, able to win another national championship last night. As that, as, uh, now that program has four national championships uh after last night's win for uh for bill self and kansas and isn't bill self making 10 million and hubert's making a million i think uh well i mean it was hubert's first year as a college basketball coach was at 19 for self it would have been great at, if he won uh, though, at kansas his first year um it was he was close man i, I mean know. that's that's one of those things that you try and overcome and you try to get back to um they will i think right you would think you would think that sets the bar pretty high in year one, though. Yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, but he was ready for it. I mean, yeah, you was. know, like that article we had about him putting pictures of the Superdome in their locker room, like at the beginning of the season. I love that. It was. Um, it really was a, a great story for uh, for it Hubert was. Davis, um, and North Carolina. I mean, at some point in the middle of the year, I mean, they were nearly playing themselves out of the ACC uh, tournament. They were playing themselves out of the ACC standings mm -hmm. and schedule. Um, so I mean, it was it was a wild ride for them to uh, to be in in that game. Did we still not have Coach Brady? No, I, uh, I sent him a new link because the old one was not working. So I sent him another email. And I just texted him. So we should hear from him shortly. Here he is. Here he is. All right, let's uh, let's talk to our uh, our coach here on the uh, on the Jordy Colada show. See if we can't link up with Coach John Brady, who was uh, playing host down in the city of New Orleans this weekend. I know it was a great weekend for the sport, for the game. It was a great weekend for college basketball, and I know a lot of uh, a lot of your former friends, or not former friends, but former uh, co-workers uh, and coaches, uh, were down there taking part in it as well. Do we have coach? Yes, we should. We should. Coach, you there? Uh, there he is. Coach Brady. I don't know why they can't hear us. He should be able to. Same way I do it every time. <laughs> All right, let me try one more thing. Coach, can you hear us? Coach, coach, coach. <laughs> this is the way I do it every time, so I don't know what the deal is. But we got him. All right, we are going to uh, we're going to call it a day here at the Jordy Collada Show. We appreciate you being here. We're going to uh, be back with you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I apologize for all the technical difficulties. Hopefully we can line these interviews up for you tomorrow and bring in this information, but uh, it's on us this morning. We'll be better tomorrow, 7 a.m. Uh, here on the Jordy Collada Show. Thank you.